Hello, and welcome to another edition of Medicare Simplified with your host, Dave Miller. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Medicare Simplified. Today, we're finally going to look into the donut hole. You've heard me talk about it in the past, and you're going to hear about it today. I want to show you just how expensive this can be, not just by month, but by year, and then over the course of five or 10 years, you're going to see how the numbers add up very quickly. So if you're going to work past 65, make sure the insurance you have, whether it's through your employer, marketplace, or otherwise, make sure it's considered creditable coverage by Medicare standards. Creditable coverage defined is equal to or greater than what Medicare offers for hospitals, doctors, and prescription drug coverage. As long as you meet those guidelines, you have nothing to worry about working past 65 and not going on Part B and D right away. But at 65, it's advisable to go ahead and enroll in Part A alone. After all, it doesn't cost you anything as we discussed previously. So let's take a look at a perfect scenario. Medicare Part B premium with no IRMAA is $164.90 for 2023. I'm going to use $25 as a premium for Medicare Advantage plan. Some are cheaper, some are more expensive, but this is a simple number for an example. Grand total, your monthly premium is $189.90. Now let's say you're looking at a Medigap plan, for example. Again, $164.90 for Part B premium. That doesn't change as long as there's no RMAA, as I discussed earlier. Medigap plan G, $121.25. Again, fictitional, but realistic. A Medicare drug plan for $11.25. Again, ballpark, cheaper, more expensive plans do exist. Your grand total, $297.40. Now, folks, this is a perfect example of doing it by the numbers and making a smooth transition from individual or pre-65 insurance into Medicare. And that's what I hope all of you will do. Please share the podcast with your friends because all the ones I've done in the past and this one and the ones in the future will be very helpful to them when they get ready to make the transition or if they have a penalty, this one will definitely help because I'm going to show you how to possibly get these penalties reduced. It's unlikely you'll ever get them removed completely. I've seen it happen through other agents, but it's very rare. Usually it's just not having the right forms, like the one for creditable coverage I spoke about in a previous podcast, and I'll talk about it again today in just a minute. But first, I want to show you what happens if you don't have creditable coverage and you're still working, whether it's through your employer or individual insurance you got through the marketplace or otherwise. Mr. Williams entered his initial enrollment period in January of 2020. Since he was working, he didn't enroll in Part B, just Part A. However, his coverage was not considered creditable coverage by Medicare standards, as I discussed earlier. Now, here it is June of 2022. He's looking to retire, and he discovers he made a mistake and can't enroll in Part B until the open enrollment period for Part B, which is January 1st to March 31st. He will have to wait until January 31st, the first day, before that Part B will become effective. We're talking over a year later. Now he will be able to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan or Medigap plan with separate drug plan in July 1st of 2023, effective date. Mr. Williams' premium will still be $164.90 for 2023. However, he will have to pay a late enrollment penalty of $33, Part B late enrollment penalty, the actual calculation comes out to $32.98. However, it will be rounded up to the nearest $0.10, cents, making it $33. His total premium for Part B with penalty will be $197.88, and it could have been a lot less. Let me show you some math on this. The Part B premium, without IRMAA again, is $164.90 for the year 2023. Mr. Jones went two and a half years, 30 months, with no Part B coverage. The way they calculate the Part B late enrollment penalty is every 12 months you go without credible coverage, it's a 10% penalty of whatever your Part B premium would be, rounded up to the nearest 10 cents. Now, if IRMAA kicks in and your premium is higher, your penalty is going to be higher. It follows the math. And if you start Medicare, say, in April, and you go two years, it would go from April to March, one or two 12-month periods, same thing. 12 months is 12 months. It doesn't matter when you start your Medicare. It goes by 12-month cycles. 
So 164.90 times 20%, because he had two 12-month cycles in there, it comes out to $32.98, rounded up because of the 98 to $33. And this will be his lifetime penalty for Part B. Let's take a look at what he's going to put out monthly now with the Medicare Advantage plan. Part B premium of $164.90, $25 for his Medicare Advantage plan. Part B late enrollment penalty, $33. Now, his total monthly premiums with everything included is $222.90. It could have been $189.90. $33 a month is a good bit of money. But when you look at the annual, it's $396, almost $400. Folks, I don't know about you, but I could use that $400 in a year's time for a lot of good things. But now Mr. Williams isn't going to have that. And if you recall, when we talked about Medicare earlier in a different podcast, I brought up about Part D penalties. Part D penalties are calculated differently. Let's take a look at what happens when you find someone who did not have creditable drug coverage. Mr. Jones also entered his initial enrollment period of January of 2020. Since he was in great health, no prescriptions, he elected not to get a drug plan. Why waste the money, he thought? Well, as Paul Harvey would say, and now, the rest of the story. Mr. Jones has Medicare, and his first chance to get Medicare drug coverage during his initial enrollment period, which ended on March 31st of 2020. He doesn't have prescription drug coverage from any other source. Because he didn't join a Medicare plan by the end of his initial enrollment period, he will now be assessed a late enrollment penalty when he does. Well, in 2022, during annual enrollment, he decided to get a drug plan. He went with Medicare Advantage prescription drug coverage. Now, that won't go into effect until January 1st of 2023, giving him two years or 24 months with no prescription drug coverage. His penalty in 2023 will be 24% of $32.74, the national base beneficiary premium for 2023. Let's take a quick look at the math on this and how the penalty is calculated. Again, in 2023, the base beneficiary premium is $32.74. Since Mr. Jones went 24 months with no Part D coverage, he will be penalized 1% per month until he starts it, which will be January of 23. The penalty starts at your first chance to enroll, in his case, January of 2020. That was 24 months, 24%. 24% of $32.74 comes out to $7.85.76. Rounded to the nearest dime is $7.90 per month, late enrollment penalty for life. Let's take a look at what his monthly output will be. Medicare Part B premium, $164.90. Medicare Advantage plan with prescription drug coverage, $25.00. Part D late enrollment penalty, two years, 24 months, $7.90. Monthly premium is now going to be $197.80 when it could have been $189.90. $7.90 a month. You think that may not be much. How much is that a year? $94.80. I don't know about you, but that's the kind of money I want in my pocket. Again, it's money that should not have been spent a penalty. What happens if you really mess up? You don't have any coverage after you get part A and you just don't have anything. It's not going to go away. Let's take a look at what it could be. We're going to use the two-year time frame that I used in the previous examples to keep it simple. Medicare Part B premium, no IRMAA, $164.90. Medicare Advantage plan, $25. Part B late enrollment penalty for two years, $33. Part D, late enrollment penalty, two years, $7.90. The total output now would be $230.80, when it could have been $189.90, $40.90 a month. In the course of a year, that comes out to $490.80. In 10 years, that's $4,908. Folks, I don't know about you, but I don't want to lose that kind of money in retirement. You're on fixed income. Prices do nothing but go up. 
And this is the kind of money you need in your pocket. This is why I'm doing these podcasts. This is why I want to make sure you and your friends, your family, co-workers, please share these podcasts so that they don't end up in this kind of predicament, okay? Now let's take a look at an example that happened in 2016. It was during annual enrollment, a very sweet lady. She called me up. She saw my ad on TV or radio. I'm not sure how she found me. I went down to visit her. She was on Plan J from August of 2004 until when I enrolled her January 1st, effective date in 2017. Plan J originally came with a drug plan. And it wasn't the greatest, but she didn't take any prescription drugs, so she didn't care. It wasn't until 2006 that Plan J's drug plan was considered not credible coverage. She may have gotten a letter and thought it was junk mail and threw it away. She didn't get a new drug plan, and she just didn't seem to think there was anything wrong until she and I sat down. In 2016, annual enrollment, we were talking, and when I heard she had Plan J, she never got another drug plan. I was shocked, and I was feeling bad already. It turned out to be 161 months without credible coverage for her drugs. And there is no max for these penalties, folks. Part B, Part D, there is no maximum amount for penalty. I think that's wrong. I think the max penalty should be when you hit the premium. For example, Part B, $164.90, or Part D, $32 and change. It shouldn't go up like it's about to go up in my example. You take 1% of 3274 comes out to 32.74 cents. But when you multiply that by 161 months, it comes out to $52.71.14, rounded off to 5274 monthly penalty for life. Now, folks, I think we can agree that's ridiculous. It shouldn't ever be allowed to go that high. I have written my congressman with a proposal. You know, it's probably not going to go anywhere because it would cut down all these penalties. And I suggested maxing the penalty at a certain amount and only penalizing someone for a few years, like three to five years. And then the penalty either goes away or gradually goes down by X percent until it's completely gone. But like the donut hole, we still have it. We were told it was going to go away by 2020. It's still here. So I doubt my efforts were not going to do anything, but at least I'm trying and I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep fighting it. And I know there's other agents out there that are doing the same. If you do wind up with one of these penalties and you go to my website, mig you'll see a tab for Knowledge Center. Click on it. In the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see Part D Appeal for Late Enrollment Form. There's also a Part B Appeal Letter for late enrollment. If you have either of these penalties, download these forms, the instructions are included, and send them to the address that's included on the paperwork. It's highly unlikely these penalties will ever go away, but maybe you can get them reduced. I've been told a few people have had them go away completely, but I've never seen it myself. Remember to get the letter of credible coverage. Again, mig Go to Knowledge Center, and in the bottom left side, you'll see Credible Coverage Form. Download it, print it, have your HR Administrator Benefits Department fill it out for you. They have all the information. They know how to do it. I'm sure they've done it millions of times. If you have individual insurance through Marketplace or otherwise, call the company you have your coverage with. They will help you fill out the form, or they will fill it out for you and send it to you. When you get that form, Keep it in a safe place. Make copies of it. I suggest putting the original in a safe deposit box. That way, it's always there in a safe place where you know where it is. If you don't have a safe deposit box, find two separate places. Put the original where you keep the deed to your house, car titles, what have you. Put copies in a filing cabinet or somewhere else so that you always know where one is. The reason I say this, whether you get on Medicare right away at 65 or you delay it, if that company ever gets bought out by another company or it goes under and disappears forever like so many have over the last couple of years or records get lost and let's face it digital records paper records they all get lost at some point in time it happens you have the originals 
and the copies in safe places. You never know if you'll need them. So please keep them in a safe place. I hope you found today's podcast interesting and informative. I look forward to continuing our journey and speaking with you again soon. If you have any comments, questions, please reach out to me at dave at migfu.net. And I look forward to hearing from you and continuing our journey. Have a great day. If you've enjoyed this podcast and don't want to miss future episodes of Medicare Simplified with me, Dave Miller, please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to check out my book, Medicare Ready, Set, Go, available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle format. If you're looking for Medicare advice, please reach out to me at dave at mig, the number four, letter U, dot net, or online at mig, the number four, letter U, dot net.